Oi, oi, you seeing me must mean I'm bloody fishing. So, just got my stuff out of the van. I'm getting all set up now. I'm gonna walk around the lake. Hopefully, I find a carpy little picture. If not, it'll be my video setting up. Feeling positive today. I'm feeling confident. Sun's banging. I'm definitely sure I'm gonna see a fish. Fingers crossed, anyway. A little flick about four wraps out in front of me. With fishing this same swim on Sunday, I felt like it was only right to put the, fit, the rod in the same position underneath the tree towards the lilies. I had a gut feeling about the fish was going to be over here. I felt that with the calm of the water and the sun that we've had, I felt the carp could have been chilling over this side more than the opposite side. Where I was fishing so close in, I wanted my line to be super slack so there was no way it could put off a carp if it was in the area. Using the same tactics as before, I just wanted to put out a few boilies over the top, 12mm illusion, 12mm fish mix. Hi, hi. So I'm out there, I'm fishing now. My three rods are out on the spot. I feel confident where I put them. Let's just hope the carp are out there. They fancy feeding on my spots. It's a really nice day out there. It's absolutely blazing. I've got all the windows open on the bivvy as well. Sweaty. But it looked like it looks like it could produce a fish. There's three other anglers on it at the minute. I was quite surprised. I thought with weather that we've had, I thought I was gonna come over here to a busy syndicate. But lucky enough, it's just it's space for me to fit in. I'm gonna keep my eyes locked on the water for the moment, see if I can see any fish, see if I feel to move the rods, but it's looking good at the moment. Oh my god. Did that, was that a fish? Sounds banging to me, that's a fucking So it looks like the fishing trip's been cut short. She had a phone call from the boss that I've got to go to work tomorrow, so let's hope a bag of carp tonight. Feeling confident for it. The rods are out there, they're on the spots. Let's do a fish. This sun is blazing. It literally feels like I'm on holiday. I've seen good signs of fish. Even like little fish, leads me to think there's going to be big fish hiding around here. I've got good faith in this bite. I'm telling you, I'm catching a fish tonight. Oh, I'm hoping anyway. But the rods are out there. And normally at this lake, I seem to have a bite within like the first three hours, three to four hours. Oh my God. Oh my God. I don't know if I can get this, I don't know if I can get this. Let me see. Wait, come on, where are you? Are you seeing this? Can you witness this? I've got a pot of rod on that, innit? Is that, can you see that fizz? Is that, that's gotta be done. I'm gonna have to move that. Unfortunately, I just went to my rods and had a look over there. That's not in my swim, I can't really fish there, but oh, God. After seeing how much fizz is like, that is crazy. Oh, why did someone else have to be fishing that swim? <laughs> I'd be all over that. Well, what a view. Let's hope that the carp gods will pay their children. So, it's just going quarter past six now. It's got a little bit cold, the sun's going down. But, 
feel confident in the spots I've chose. I'm seeing like little fish activity, so there's definitely a big carp hiding with them little fish somewhere. Fishing two pop-ups on the uh, orange, and uh, one of Ollie's pink on the right. So let's, let's hope there's going to be a carp out here. I'm hungry for a bite anyway. But it's got definitely got chilli. So for tonight's dinner's dress, gone for the old string noodles, Jamaican, a bigger punch, and a little healthy little yogurt. Trying to eat a little bit better, you know, summer's around the corner. Got the kettle on. Hopefully, we can do a fish tonight. It's going to leave the rods where they are, I'm not going to move them. They're baited to precise that. As I said, once again, I've not heard a knock or anything. I don't feel like I need to move them unless I see a show. But let's stay with it, stay confident, see what happens. So it's just gone 20 to 9. Probably going to chill out now. Probably brush my teeth, go to the toilet, and dream of big carp. Hopefully, there's a chance that I might get to wet the net. <laughs> right. Good night. Good morning. I treated myself to a lane. It's quarter to three. Unfortunately, my alarm didn't go last night, but let's stay positive and hope I still want a bag of fish before I pack up and go to work. I'm going to get the kettle on now, get something to warm my body up. A tip for you is, well I ain't having a cup of tea now, but a little tip for you. Don't put tea bags in glug pots, especially when they start to smell of the glug. So, them tea bags are in. You have to settle for the old porridge then to warm me up. <sighs> so, it's just gone half five. I've just closed the gate on the syndicate. The sunrise up coming up behind me, and I'm off to work now. Oh, yeah. Once again, I would just like to take time. And thank absolutely everyone that's taken time out of their day to watch my latest vlog video. I really appreciate it. But unfortunately this time round, I didn't manage to catch a fish. But I thought, I've got to keep you guys entertained. And what the best way to do that is keep talking fishing. So one of the questions I've recently been asked, what is my go-to rig? And I, this is my go-to rig. It consists of between a 6 to 7 inch boom to a size 4 hook with a micro ring swivel that I dub on. I use boom because there it's invisible underwater, you can't see it and I like the way it's, it's stiff. I use no putty at all, I trim my pop up down until I find that it goes down like that. Recently a very wise angler has shown me this technique and it's changed the game for me this year. Big up him for doing that. But I do use a PVA nugget, so I know this is 100% presented on the floor. My, my wafter rig consists of the same sort of thing. Six to seven inch boom, size four hook, with a bit of supernatural, and a bead stop to hold the supernatural so the, so the uh, micro ring swivel don't move, and it gives it a bit more movement. But they are my go-to rigs that I've caught plenty of fish this season on both of them. This one more so in the summer, but I know we're coming up to these months where I'm probably going to change over to wafters. Recently, last week, the weather was absolutely banging, but this week round, it's a bit chillier. So hopefully we'll have a bit more sun soon. But I'm going to show you how to make these rigs now. First of all, I like to start off with about 10 inches of stiff boom. With having fat fingers, I like to cut off extra so I have extra room to play with when I'm trying to do my loops. 
always remember to cut it at an angle because it makes it easier sliding it on the crimps. These are the smaller size crimps. Now add in the spinner wig swivel. Another thing I like to do, I like to make sure it's not too tight on the ring. So it gives a lot of movement, but it's not too much, it's just enough. When placing the crimps on, always make sure they're aligned right, because if it's not aligned right, it will go to like a, a weird little shape and you won't do what it's meant to do. Bang in, check that bad boy out. It's just enough, so it's just tight, enough for a little bit of movement. Always remember to slide the towel in now, then later, so it don't mess up the crimp, and obviously the sleeve. Me personally, I like my boom to be around six to seven inches. When I crimp it, I want the loop to be sort of small, so it makes it easier getting it off the quick release end. If the loop's too big, it just makes it ag when you want to change the rig from the quick release end of the swivel. Cutting the taggons off, not too close to the crimp, so you allow the stretch, but something so it stops it getting snagged up on your net if you catch a beast or in the weeds or something. As you see, it needs to be steamed so it goes perfectly straight. And I'm going to use that technique and I'll do it all over again to make one more rig up. If only it was just this quick. I'm now making the slip D part of one of the rigs. So I like to push a bead stop onto the supernatural so it holds it nice and tight to the hook. Now hook the bead stop onto the hook. Now you just got to thread the micro ring swivel on. Threading it only onto one side of the supernatural. Using that bead stop for presentation, it keeps that bit part of the D section nice and tight and very smart. Now you've just got to cut down a bit of shrink tube into size, slide it on the hook as well. don't want the shrink tubing to be too long, you just want it to go up just a little bit up the shank so it allows the micro ring swivel to move freely up and down. Now you've got to fit the spinner ring swivel through the eye of the hook. I 
I like to wrap the supernatural rounds once or twice around the spinner red swivel. Now you just got to slide the shrink tubing down onto the spinner red swivel. And cut the tag ends nice and tight. Now you just got to get in front of a kettle and get that bad boy shrunk. Bang in. Now this side's a little bit easier. Just cut a bit of shrink tubing, not too much, just enough to go over the eye and onto the spinner rig swivel. With my shrink tubing, I like to match whatever bottom I'm using. So if I'm fishing on silt, I like to use a silt colour. When I'm happy with it, I like to get that bad boy in front of the kettle and get that shrunk. Bang in. Now just for the mic ring swivel and a bead stop. Now I like to get it in front of a kettle and pull it tight to get that spoon nice and tight. Check that out, banging. Hopefully you've enjoyed this week's vlog. And if you enjoy it that much, I hope you give it a like and a subscribe too. I'm back on the bank this week, hoping to bag a banger. So until next week's vlog, fishing with Bam, over and out. <laughs>